This is the last story, and it's called Octopussy. Sooty Sweep and Sue were so excited. They had just been to see the film about Pinocchio and couldn't stop talking about it. Sooty thought the best part was when Pinocchio was swallowed by the whale, while Sweep thought it was very funny when the puppet's nose grew longer each time he told a lie. Sue, on the other hand, thought it was marvellous that a puppet made of wood could run and dance and talk just like a real person. The man who made Pinocchio must have been very clever indeed, she said. Sweep, as usual, disagreed. I bet Sooty could make a puppet which would do everything that Pinocchio does, he said. Well, Sue had to admit that Sooty was very clever at making things out of wood, but surely he couldn't make a walking, talking puppet, could he? What do you think? Do you think Sooty could make such a puppet? Well, Sooty thought for a while, then he said, Yes, I think I can do it, but you two will have to help me. Sue and Sweep agreed immediately. Oh, yes, we'll help you, Sooty, said Sue. Just tell us what to do. Sooty started to explain. First of all, a drawing of the puppet would have to be made, and as Sue was quite good at drawing, it would be her job to design the type of puppet to be made. So Sue got out her colouring pens and pencils and some large sheets of paper and set about the task. She had an idea. She would design a puppet the like of which no one had ever seen before. Hee hee hee, she laughed. Sooty will be surprised. While Sue was doing this, Sweep was helping Sooty to gather together the wood and the tools. Oh dear, said Sooty. We'll need some nails and there aren't any here. Don't worry, said Sweep. I'll go and ask Matthew for some. Off went Sweep to the shed in the garden where Matthew was working. As he entered the shed, Sweep said, Matthew, Sooty wants some nails. Nails, Sweep? asked Matthew. How long do you want them? Well, we want them to keep, actually, said Sweep. <laughs> Matthew laughed. No, Sweep. I didn't mean how long you wanted the nails for. I meant how long are the nails you want? You know, what size? Oh, well, Sweep wasn't too sure what size nails Sooty wanted, so he asked Matthew to give him some long ones. Matthew handed him a tin containing nails of different sizes. Here, these should do the trick, he said. By the way, what's Sooty making? You'll find out soon enough, replied Sweep, as he sped away. Sooty was waiting in his workshop, and as Sweep returned and handed him the tin of nails, he said, Well done, Sweep. Now we're almost ready to begin making our puppet. Let's see how Sue's getting on with the plan. They hurried into the kitchen where Sue was just finishing her drawing. <sighs> there you are, Sooty, Sue said, holding up the drawing of the puppet. Well, Sue's idea for the puppet was certainly different. It was nothing like any puppet Sooty or Sweep had ever seen or imagined. It has a cat's head and body, said Sooty doubtfully. And a dog's ears? said Sweep, not believing his eyes. That's right, boys, said Sue. It also has a, a pig's tail and a cat's legs. Uh, that wasn't all. Suddenly, Sooty noticed something very peculiar about Sue's puppet. It had eight legs. An eight-legged cat, he said. That's right, Sooty Sue laughed. Have you never heard of an octopussy? <laughs> what? said Sweep. An octopussy, Sue explained. It's rather like an octopus, only it drinks milk and chases birds. Sooty and Sweep 
had to admit that Sue's idea was very good. But would Sooty be able to make such an odd-looking puppet? What do you think? Could Sooty make a dog-eared, pig-tailed, eight-legged cat? Sooty decided that he would have a go, and the three of them went into Sooty's workshop, taking Sue's drawing with them. Sooty looked at the drawing and scratched his little yellow furry head. This wasn't going to be easy. He never had to make anything as peculiar as this, but he must try. Soon, there could be heard the sounds of sawing and hammering from within Sooty's workshop. I wonder what they're up to in there, said Matthew as he passed by the door of the workshop. Never mind. I suppose I'll find out soon enough. Soon, the puppet began to take shape. First, the head was carved, then the body, then, one by one, the eight legs were shaped, all made out of wood. The pig's tail would be a problem, though, as it was a curly tail and it would have to be made out of something bendy. What could be used that was bendy or curly? What would you use for a pig's tail? Well, it was Sue who finally had an idea. Why not use Sooty's toy rubber snake for the tail? That was curly. Sooty wasn't so sure. He was rather fond of his toy snake and didn't know whether he liked the idea of it dangling at the back of an eight-legged puppet. Still, there was nothing else to use, so the snake it had to be. There were just two more parts to be made before the puppet could be put together. Can you think... What was needed to make the puppet complete? I'll give you a clue. The two parts would need to be stuck onto the head. I'll give you another clue. Without these parts, you wouldn't be able to listen to this story. Got it? That's right, the ears. But no ordinary ears. They would have to be dog's ears, long and floppy, like a spaniel's ears. Sooty and Sue looked at Sweep. Oh, no, you don't, yelped Sweep. You're not using my ears for the puppet. Sooty and Sue laughed. It's all right, they assured the anxious dog. We aren't going to cut off your ears, Sweep. We'll think of something else to use. What could they use to resemble long, floppy ears? What would you use? Plasticine? Paper? Straw? It's not easy, is it? Suddenly, Sweep had the answer. Sue can knit some ears out of wool. Well, that was a good idea, wasn't it? And as Sue was an excellent knitter, she agreed at once and got busy with her needles and wool. Soon, she had knitted two long, floppy, black ears. Just like Sweep's ears. They now had all the parts and all that was needed was to put them together to make the puppet complete. Sooty got busy with hammer and nails, and once again the room shook with the sound of hammering and banging. In fact, there was so much noise coming from the room that Matthew couldn't even hear himself think. He decided to do something about it. Marching to the door, he rapped smartly on it. Sooty, Sweep and Sue, what are you doing in there? Well, there was, there was so much noise coming from within that Sooty Sweep and Sue couldn't hear Matthew. He tried again, knocking very loudly on the door. He shouted loudly, What is going on in there? Still, no reply. This is no good, Matthew thought. They're making so much noise they can't hear me. Something had to be done. So he hammered and pounded on the door and shouted as loudly as he could. Stop making so much noise! The hammering stopped, but Matthew didn't realise, as he was making so much noise himself, he continued to bang and shout until Sue opened the door. What's all the noise for? She said calmly. I was going to... <clears throat> I, I was going to ask you the same question, said Matthew. What's going on in there? 
Before Sue could answer, Sooty shouted, It's finished! What's finished? Matthew wanted to know. Come and see for yourself, said Sweep. Matthew entered the workshop and crossed to the bench where Sooty's strange-looking puppet now proudly stood. <laughs> what on earth is that? said the surprised Matthew. It's a dog-eared, pig-tailed, eight-legged cat, replied Sooty. Well, Matthew was amazed. He'd never seen such a creature, though he had to admit that it had been very well made. It looked so real. But what does it do? he asked. Well, not a lot at the moment, said Sooty. That comes later. First, we must think of a name for our puppet. Sweep had an idea. How about Pinocchio? Don't be ridiculous, Sweep, said Sue. Our puppet doesn't look anything like Pinocchio. Then Matthew had a try. He suggested the name Wooden Cat. Sooty wasn't keen on that and thought Flop Cat might be more appropriate because of the puppet's floppy ears. How about Curly Cat, suggested Sweep. It has got a curly tail, after all. They could not agree. What could they call it? Have you got any ideas? What would you call a dog-eared, pig-tailed, eight-legged cat? Well, a lot of suggestions were made until Sue eventually came up with a name that everybody agreed on. We'll call it Octopussy, she said. After all, that was the name I gave it when I designed it. Octopussy it was. Matthew now wanted to know how Sooty could make Octopussy come alive. Oh, that part's easy, replied Sooty, as he went to his desk to get something. Now, what do you think Sooty went to get? Sooty returned with... <laughs> yes, you've guessed it, his magic wand. Well, without further ado, Sooty waved his wand and everybody said the magic words. Now, you all know the magic words, don't you? OK. Who said abracadabra? Wrong. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, Sooty said his magic words. Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. <coughs> Suddenly, there was a flash of light and a puff of smoke and a loud bang. Octopussy had come to life. The dog-eared, pig-tailed, eight-legged cat moved looked around, and then before Sooty Sweep, Sue or Matthew could do anything about it, leapt from the bench, raced across the room as fast as its eight legs would carry it, and shot out of the door. Recovering from the shock, Sooty and the others quickly followed the fleet-footed puppet into the next room, just in time to catch a glimpse of a curly tail disappearing through an open window. Now, if they hadn't given it so many legs, they might just have stood a chance of catching the runaway puppet. As it was, the last they ever saw of it was as it raced across a field like an express train and disappeared into the distance, never to be seen by them again. So if you should happen to see on your travels a dog-eared, pig-tailed, eight-legged cat which answers to the name of Octopussy, you will let Sooty know, won't you? You see, he wants his snake back.